this video, we're going to go over the second derivative test. This is from section 4.1. And the second derivative test is going to give us yet another way of classifying critical points of a function. In other words, whether or not those things are relative maxes or mins, or as I like to call them, if those critical points are peaks or troughs. And I'm going to split this up into three parts. All right. In, in this first video, we're just going to go over the idea of this behind the second derivative test. What makes it work, and why does it work? And in the second part, we'll do an explicit example applying the second derivative test. And in the third part, I'll show you some examples of where it fails, and those are the cases where you have to watch out. This test is not infallible, and it won't work all the time. So let's start with the first part. What's the idea behind the second derivative test? Why does it work? So in other words, how are we going to use the second derivative to tell us whether we have a peak or a trough? And it's really simple. We, all you really have to do is look at these two pictures. So let's say that this is one part of the function, f. And here's another part of the function, f. Later on, it looks like this. OK. Obviously, this is concave down. This is concave up, right? This is concave down. And this is concave up. OK. Well, remember, we're trying to classify critical points. So where's the critical point in this picture? Well, obviously, it's here. Because that's simply where the tangent line to the graph is going to have a zero slope. Whereas on the picture on the right, the critical point is somewhere here. And now let's look at these two pictures. For this critical point, let's call it x equals c. Here, x is equal to c. OK, in this picture on the left, the critical point is here and the function is concave down. And what do we have at the same time? We have a peak. And in the picture on the right, when the function is concave up, the critical point is actually a trough. And so in other words, when your function is concave down and you have a critical point, you have a relative max. And when your function is concave up and you have a critical point, then your critical point is a relative min. Now, where does the second derivative come into all this? Well, how can you what's one way, what's the way one way we know of determining when a function is concave down or concave up? It's checking when the second derivative is positive or negative. In the case when the second derivative here is negative, we get concave down. And if the second derivative is positive, then the function is concave up. And now let's look at how this works. You have a critical point, and you're concave down. So what's the conclusion? Peak. All right. Why? Because the shape of the graph has to curve has to curve downwards, but because there's a critical point in between, that critical point must have been a peak. On the other hand, if you're concave up and you have a critical point, then what does that give you? That gives you a trough. So if the shape of your function is curving downwards like this, and the critical points in between, then you must have a relative min there. All right, so concave down, crit critical point, and concave down gives you peaks. Critical points and concave up give you troughs. And that's the idea behind the second derivative test. You just check the, deriv the second derivative, the value of the second derivative, whether it's positive or negative, and that's going to tell you whether you have a peak or a trough. 
if the second derivative is positive, you actually have a trough. All right, you have a relative min. It seems a little backwards, but remember, the second derivative is telling you about the shape, the concavity of the graph. Whereas, if the second derivative is negative, then you have a peak there, the second derivative at that critical point. All right, and that's the idea, the idea behind the second derivative test.